Hi, uh, my name is Dimitar and this is Yasin. We are here to talk about the influence of music and sound effects on immersive games. Uh, me and him come from both musical and programming background. We have both graduated the Plovdiv Music School in Bulgaria. And uh, also I'm playing the piano from age four and I think he's playing the guitar from the first grade. Uh, so we are here to share our insights and what worked for us for our game Move Lender, which was in development for more than seven years. Now, the talk will be split into two parts. I will share with you some insights on the music, and then Yasna will talk more about how impl we implemented the sound effects in the game. In the first part, we will cover topics like producing coherent soundtrack, how to choose your instruments, how to avoid uh, repetitiveness, and much more. So, who this presentation is for? Well, it is intended for professional composers that want to gain valuable new insights on how they can potentially do their soundtracks. It is also for people that have a musical background and uh, they are eager to start composing themselves. And lastly, because we are a small uh, gaming studio, we compose primarily using VSTs, so most of the tips are especially valid if you are also composing with VSTs, basically. So. Where to start when composing music for a game? Well, first, uh, for a particular scene, you need to understand what feeling you want to convey. So, do you want the players to feel fear or anxiety? Do they want, uh, do, should they be overpowered or adventurous? Then you need to identify, do you have any talking in the scene? Are there any special objects producing sounds? If uh, they are, you need to leave those frequencies clear for the players so they can hear those things. Uh, and also you need to choose the overall style of your soundtrack. So we will go for a more classical Western ensemble type of soundtrack, or you prefer more of an ethnic Eastern feeling. We will have a full blown uh, percussive, or we will cho choose to do your rhythm with instruments like pianos and xylophones and marimbas. Whatever you choose, you should stick with it for the entirety of the soundtrack. Now, a couple of tips on how to make it sound coherent. So firstly, obviously, you need a melody. And you should not overthink it too much. You need something simple with a clear and distinctive rhythm. That way, you will have a lot of power to, uh, to introduce it in many different ways during the entirety of your soundtrack. Then try to play that melody in as many different tracks as possible. Uh, you, can, uh, you can spice it up, not play it one-to-one, -one, but uh, do some variations, change some little notes, play some parts of it, but ideally you want to play it in as many places as possible. And uh, lastly, you should create uh, contra melodies for important bits of your game. So, for example, if you have some uh, villain, if, uh, or if you have some really interesting biome, you can do their own basically melodies and play them alongside the main melody in their correspondent tracks. That way they will be much more impactful when they are seen in the game. Uh, so how to choose instruments when you are composing a particular track? Well, you should identify the biome where this, this track basically plays out. Uh, for example, if you make a track for a case terrain, terrain uh, you can choose instruments that play more distinctive notes, like pianos or marimbas. That way they will imitate the roughness of the terrain and will connect with it. Also, you should pick a contrasting instrument for the melody. Uh, the melody should be heard very clearly, at least from time to time during the entirety of your soundtrack. That will make it stick to the heads uh, in the heads of the players. After all, you, you want them to whistle it out after they finish playing your game, right? So, also, how uh, can you be sure that the, the players are hearing the things that you want them to hear? Well, here are some insights on that. For example, for the melody, in order to make it more impactful, try to support it with a few other instruments that will play right alongside with it. Those instruments can be from the same instrument type so, for example, if your melody is played by a cello, you can have a supportive viola or double bass uh, that plays with it. They should also not be clearly distingu distinguishable themselves. They should play with a lower intensity and just uh, magnify the impact of the melody and not steal attention from it. Uh, also, 
they can they can play some variations you don't need to duplicate the melody in them they can only support it with some of the notes and lastly if the frequencies around the melody become too cluttered you can move some of those supporting instruments an octave higher or lower and this turns out pretty great uh, but besides the besides the supportive instruments all other things that will steal attention should be lowered down or even removed when the melody kicks in basically you want the frequencies dedicated to the melody to be really dedicated to it uh, and optionally for vst recordings only if you want to make the sound richer you can duplicate uh, what one instrument is playing onto another one one to one and uh, uh, more than one instrument from the absolutely same time playing the same thing. So, for example, if you have a cello playing your melody, you can duplicate it into another cello from another VST library to make just the sound sounding richer. Uh, during build-ups, you also should try to be reactive with all of your instruments. Uh, it is especially tempting to just uh, introduce more and more instruments until you reach the pinnacle of your build-up. But you should also lower down things that could interfere with the newly added instruments that way on the pinnacle you will have this very distinctive moment and that the players will enjoy instead of a kind of a mash between too much instruments now a couple of techniques how we avoided repetitiveness in the soundtrack of Moolander. well firstly you can try mixing the section measure duration. So, for example, if you have a section that is four measures long, then you can follow it up with sections that are three or five measures long you know, to freshen it up a bit to the user. Also, you inevitably have some loops in some of the instruments in some of your tracks. You should try to misalign those loops on purpose. So, for example, if you have a couple of percussive instruments, one of them can loop each four measures, the other one can loop each three measures, the other, the other one five measures. That way each new section will start with a fresh mix of those instruments and that will bring variation to your tracks. Uh, for the build-ups, it is uh, very good to pace them and instead doing them on a single build-up, especially if they are very long, you should do it in like a wavy pattern where each next wave becomes bigger and bigger until you finally reach the pinnacle of the build-up. And lastly, for the loops, uh, if you need to repeat some loop a couple of times, try to freshen it up a bit and uh, change up some of the rhythm, some of the notes. If you don't know what exactly to change, just experiment, try to even delete some of the notes in each of the instances of the loop and it will sound uh, much more interesting at the end. Uh, now, when you're composing a track for a scenario, you know exactly how that track will, will play out. So you can be very distinctive and very specific in the way you build your track. You have full creative freedom over the tempo, over the instruments, over everything. But when you're composing for a biome, um, then that means that your track will probably be looping uh, a lot of times, basically. So you need to create a lot of loop points. In order to do that, you should be much more conservative with uh, changing the tempo or the instruments mid-track, basically. And you want all of your transitions to be much shorter in those tracks. Now we arrive at a couple of examples of some of the points we talked here. So the first one is from the Ori and the Blind, Ori and the Wheel of the Wisp game. It's a beautiful soundtrack and in the example, uh, the melody is, is played by a flute and it is backed up by another instrument, a uh, violin, that plays with a lower volume and that way the melody has much more richness to its sound. Next, we have a track from God of War. Actually, the next four examples are all from this one track. Uh, the first example will show how you're using complementing instruments to magnify the impact of the melody. So here you can hear a couple of instruments playing with a much lower uh, intensity than the melody, but they make the, the impactfulness of the melody much bigger.
or you can go and uh, uh, get the intensity on your complementing instruments uh, up and that way you have something like a duet between them and the melody. This also works very good for some tracks. Next is an example of avoiding repetitiveness. So here we have a section that is four measures long. That one is seven, seven measures long. And the last one is only two measures long and they even change the beats per measure here. Last example is uh, for a build-up that is reactive, so they lower down some of the instruments during the build-up. Uh, sorry, not that, that one. So, Hear how the tremolo will disappear when the main melody kicks in. And with that, uh, we are at the point where we will talk about the sound effects, so now Yasin will take over. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I will quickly go through the whole process of creating sound effects. So the first steps you need to identify and list all the sound effects. Then I'm going to talk about the problems that you are inevitably going to, to uh, hit and then how to implement properly the sound effects inside the game engine. So you're starting to work on the sound effects. First, you need to list everything that you need and uh, possibly put it into groups. So you need uh, UI sound effects for the menus, you need sound effects for the player sections, for the enemies, and lastly for the environment. Here, don't rush to start working on the sound effects too soon because you want to have the aesthetics and the art of the game ready. Otherwise, if you do some certain sound effects and then you change the assets and the graphics or the particles of the game, uh, you may hit the point where the effects that you have no longer represent what you see on the screen and then you have to undo your work and start over again. So this is not a very effective way to, to do your job. Uh, here you need to make sure to use the correct sounds, obviously the metal objects need to have metal sounds and uh, the wooden one uh, should have wooden sounds. Uh, start working on the most important sound effects first. So obviously you want to have all the sound effects related to the players, to their attacks, to the enemies, and then to move on to the ambient sound effects like the wind and the waterfalls in the background. And in the last uh, mixing phase, you want to make sure that these most important sound effects are easy to hear by the users. This is done in the mixing phase. So here you have these two tricky types of sound effects. One are the repeatable sounds, so these are sounds that repeat very often, and the other ones are loopable sounds, which are ex essentially on loop. So a good example of uh, sound effects that repeat very often are uh, the, uh, the player is constantly shooting bullets or enemies are jumping and dashing all the time. And if you have the same sound played over and over and over again, the players can get very annoyed super fast and they're just going to turn the volume down. Uh, so how to handle that? In the first place, don't make the sound effects annoying, obviously. Uh, you want to make sure that you have at least two variations of each sound. So they need to be a little bit different. They need to sound a little bit different, but still roughly the same. Uh, and ideally, you would have three or four uh, sound files for each sound effect. 
and then you want to apply a random pitch randomization in the sound engine. And this way, each time you play the, the same sound, it pulls a different variant and uh, with a little bit of different pitch. So each time the player hears that effect, it sounds a little bit different. And of course, don't spam the users with a lot of the sound effects, uh, like the, the same sound effects uh, in, uh, over and over again over a couple of seconds. That, that is definitely annoying. Uh, the next tricky part are the loopable sounds. For example, you have lasers in the game and you have big sections with laser puzzles. So you have, when the laser turns on, you have a loopable sound of the laser. And if you have very high pitch sounds, they can be very intrusive to the, uh, to the ears. Or if you use two simple sounds, they can become do very fast. So you need to be very careful what uh, sample are you going to use for these loopable sounds. Uh, they definitely need to loop correctly. So you can imagine that if, if you have a sample which is two seconds long and it is not looping correctly and the players can hear where the uh, sample is getting looped, it is super awful and it's very annoying. So you need to make sure that it is looping correctly without uh, actually the users noticing that. Try to make the samples a little bit longer. In this way, you are going to uh, make it easier for the for the previous uh, problem that I just said, and it is going to make the sound uh, sound a bit more interesting. And of course, uh, you can apply the same uh, the same ideas for the previous uh, types. You can have different variations and different pitch variations, and in this way, uh, each time that you play the loopable sound, it it sounds a little bit different. Okay, so we have. They made all the important sound effects for the players, for the enemies. And now you can start working on the ambient atmosphere of the game. So here you can pull up a screenshot or a video of the game. Uh, just take a look at, at what you can see on the screen and highlight all the important sounds in the scene. So do you have water or do you have winds and birds in the background? You need to highlight these elements in the, in the sound that you create. Try to make either to make the sample long, for example, like a minute or even two minutes, so the user uh, doesn't notice that you are playing that sound on repeat, or make a multiple samples that you can loop randomly during the game, and in this way, everything is going to feel a lot more natural. And finally, you implement that into the game, you just play the game, no running, no dashing, no combat, you just stand still, observe and see if you did a good job on representing what you see on the screen and what you hear on your he headphones. Now, you have everything ready and you want to integrate it properly in your game engine. You, may, you want to use 3D audio, so essentially what 3D audio is, the enemies on the right side, you can hear them in the right speaker, on the left side, on the left speaker. You know that this is very important, for example, for shooter games and pretty much for every game. Uh, this makes of an immersive experience to the players and uh, it also gives them uh, spatial awareness so, awareness, so they know which object is where, even without looking at the screen. Keep in mind that no, not all sound effects should be 3D, so you have the menu sounds or some indication sounds like you're low on ammo or low on health. These obviously shouldn't be 3D. Uh, this is done pretty easily. You just uh, uh, attach the sound listener to the camera, and as the camera moves around the game, uh, the, the, the sounds are moving as well. Uh, and uh, this works perfectly for, for 3D games, but with 2D games you are going to have that problem. So for example, you are zooming in uh, and zooming out with the camera, so you are actually moving the camera towards or uh, further away from the sound emitters. And the sounds are gain, go going to become uh, more uh, quieter or louder. So this is very makes of a very uh, strange feeling. So you what you want to do is here in this video you can see uh, the, the static listener. So basically the camera zooms in and out, but the actual listener, the sound emitter, stays in one place and in this way the volume stays constant. And now you want to do the mixing and the mastering of the whole audio. 
Uh, this takes obviously a lot of iterations and you need to make sure that everything is the correct volume. So focus on the most important effects first and then uh, put all the other sound effects uh, in, in the place of the mix. Uh, you need to consider different types of speakers because some players are going to use headphones, some are going to play on TV or on uh, speakers. So you need to test on all these devices because they do not, do not sound the same. So you need to know how your mix sounds on different devices. Most importantly, do not hit zero decibels. So if you don't know, zero decibels is basically the limit of, um, of your audio. So it cannot get any louder. And if you have a lot of uh, loud sound effects, basically they cannot get any louder and the sound engine just starts lowering down the volume of uh, different sound effects. And this, may, this is makes of unexpected results and you don't want that. What you want is to create a quiet mix of the audio and then when you're ready, manage the final loudness from the master bus. Uh, again, test your final mix on, on multiple devices, cheap headphones, uh, expensive headphones with noise cancelling, TV, speakers. Identify the potential problems with some of the devices. For example, on TV you may not be able to hear some sound effects. So you need to fix that and test again. So this is, this is going to take some time. And lastly, in the settings of the game, you want to put the user into control of the mix. This is very important, so keep the music, the sound effects, and the dialogue's volume into a separate slider so the user can control what they want to hear. And if you want to be extra cool, you can add more sound effect layers to, uh, so the players can control them. For example, racing games are using this technique, and you can turn up or down the volume of the tires, of the engine, of the exhaust, of the of the surface. So, for example, if I want to be able to more easily know when the car is sliding because I lost traction, I can just turn the volume of the tires up. So when the car loses traction, I'm going to be easy. Uh, I will hear very easily the tires, and I know that I need to correct my steering input. Yep. Um, <coughs> thank you for the insights on the sound effects, and here. Uh, you can see the software that we used for the audio of Moolander. So we recorded the music with uh, Cakewalk, Sonar, Platinum, and popular libraries like the Contact and FM8 libraries. Also, we have listed here some of our favorite VSTs and VSTs packs. So you should definitely check them out. And lastly, we are using the FMOD audio engine, which is very powerful and, have, and has a very good integration with Unity. And uh, with that, we conclude our talk. So now it's time for your questions, I guess. And thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing somebody will give you a microphone, yeah. Thank you very much. It was a really nice talk. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys, um, you were talking about the listener position in the relation to the camera in the 2D. And um, you told that uh, you think that the good approach is to uh, have a listener in one position where he would stay even if the camera will zoom in or zoom out. And uh, I think that it will probably work, but I am just wondering if uh, this wouldn't introduce like um, this weird feeling that uh, we are getting closer, we see something uh, bigger, but the sound doesn't change. Wouldn't it like, uh, you know, like uh, break the immersion a little bit? Uh, yeah, good question. So obviously, uh, this really depends on the camera movement if it goes very further away or very zoomed in. So it depends on the game. So for example, you can confine that uh, listener to, to some uh, position not to be exact point on the camera, but to have certain type of movement. So you can still have that effect of going in and out. Uh, but it feels a bit weird if the the sounds uh, suddenly, if you zoom in and the sounds become very louder because you, you don't understand why 
suddenly the game outputs uh, higher, higher noises of, of the environment or, uh, or uh, some other things. So it is very down to, to testing. So you can so you can try different uh, types of stuff, and you can also edit like the the listener uh, because the listener is something like a sphere and each sound emitter is has like a sphere so you can control these stuff how big of the sphere is uh, so this is also another approach that you can use here you can use the static listener for example uh, make the, the the listener sphere bigger or, or smaller so you have different techniques but definitely if the listener is connected exactly on the point of the camera it makes of a weird feeling this is what we first had in the game and it, it is definitely not uh, the thing that you want. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, hey, thank you. Yeah, yeah that was nice, nice talk. Uh, yeah, uh, in terms of mm, mixing the audio and mastering, you, you mentioned uh, multiple output audio devices. And I would like to uh, know wh what is your approach uh, when it comes to this, uh, let's say, problem? Do you, th do, you, do you like create like multiple uh, mixes, like for example uh, for headphones and another for TV and so on, uh, or you, do you like manipulate with uh, a dynamic range or stereo image? Yeah, what what? Yeah, very like good no question. Things. Well, definitely a lot of games are using these uh, bit different mixes for headphones, for 5.1, for uh, for stereo. Uh, so you can uh, you can use that. Uh, mainly, you want to at least uh, because this is going to take a bit more time to to make the mix. Maybe you don't have the budget or the time to do that. So at least for the beginning, you want to make the mix sound roughly the same on the different devices. So it's not going to be the the perfect thing on every device, but it's still going to work. So you want to make sure that the the, the people on each device they can hear what what you want them to hear and then when you hit that point then of course you can do these other mixes for the, for the different types of devices right thank you thank you uh, do you have any more questions guys well if there are no more questions thank you again for having us here and yeah thank you thank you